There was the information that the Ukraine stopped the attacks on the Russian oil infrastructure, but actually it's not correct. The last night there was the major strike on the Russian oil facility in Stavropol city and at least two of the oil tanks were damaged. So we can see it here, one, two oil tanks are again and the fire I think will be spread around the facility. So Ukraine continued to use the only available long-range tool on the Russian territory and it is the drones. By the way guys, while I'm recording the video, there is the strike reported on many of the Russian facilities in Belgorod, Bryansk Oblast and also Crimea. Hello my friends and welcome, my name is Denis and this is the latest update from Ukraine. Let's go! So that is what you may read from the Sevastopol groups right now. They call everyone to go to the shelter. And drones are definitely flying in the night Russian sky. We'll see the result of the possible kabooms tomorrow morning. Meanwhile, Russians also launched their Shahi drones to strike Ukrainian objects and our guys from the mobile air defense groups usually hit them well and here the Shahi drone was hit and went into the ground, kabooming just in a field not reaching its destination. The Ukrainian air defense against the Shahi drones is very effective compared to the Russian side. Well, Russia itself is much bigger compared to Ukraine and it's hard to secure its entire territory. The Moscow region is the most defended, but even there, there are some of the kabooms reported at least once a month. Okay, so the good news for Ukraine continues. Russia reported the loss of Suhoi 34 fighter bomber. And since the start of the war, Russia has lost 34 of Suhoi 34 aircraft. So finally, the total number matches the number of the model. It is quite a lot, but still, according to the open sources, Russia built 163 of that aircraft type. Well, 156 were used by the Russian airspace forces before the war. The rest were the test prototypes, and from this 156, several of the aircraft were not air wars, they were not flying. It is usual stuff for any sort of the army, for any sort of the airplane type. So even judging on this relatively huge loss of 34 of the aircraft, Russia still potentially has more than 100 airplanes of that type able to fly and carry aviation gliding bombs. To counteract to that issue, Ukraine needs to obtain the reliable air defense system. The F-16s fighter jets also should be integrated into that air defense. By the way, Ukraine start to use them on the front lines, because judging on the latest information about one more Russian Suhoi 34 which was shut down around two weeks ago, well, it was done by Ukraine with the help of the F-16s. So the good thing that Ukraine is capable to cause losses for the Russian aviation. Because the military aviation is one of those things where Russians do have absolute advantage over Ukraine. But for this particular aircraft, not today. My friends, if you like the job that I do on this channel, you may also support me on Patreon. I'll put the link for my Patreon page right in the video description below. Thank you so much for maintaining my motivation. It seems like someone from the high officials in the United States is watching my videos. Because then we start to, let's say, complain about something or search for the certain upgrade into specific Ukrainian military field. After some time, Ukraine gets that. I'm speaking about the details of the new military package given to Ukraine by the United States of America worth 425 million United States dollars. Well, after all, it's the part of the Great Military Bill which was voted by Congress before, I mean 61 billion United States dollars. Ukraine just obtains those in those small packages. Well, what we have over here is definitely huge, but I want to put attention on the striker armored vehicles, armored personnel carriers which were and are massively in use in the Kursk battle. Despite of some of the losses of the strikers and few of them were captured by Russians, they show the great effectiveness. And now the United States have decided to increase the number of those vehicles delivered to Ukraine around 400 units. It's the great number. Ukraine absolutely needs light high mobile vehicles. Yes, it also needs the heavy armored vehicles like tanks, Leopard 2, Challenger 2, Abrams tanks, but most of the job is done by lighter vehicles like Strikers, Max Pro, and so on. The big tanks are a little clumsy and they're very limited in their capabilities, so they intended to be used in the specific scenarios. But for the fast assault on an enemy position, Striker is the awesome one. Also in the previous package, the United States decided to provide more breadlies to the Ukrainian army. Also Ukraine receives Hymas and Nassam's munition, which is awesome. What is good about the Striker vehicles is that it has the robust armor, especially on the bottom against the mines. 
It is fast, it is reliable and it saves the lives of the soldiers. It is versatile and it has the ramp on the back like in the Bradley, which is very, very useful for infantry to leave the vehicle and land. It is a greatest plus. First of all, the vehicle may face the enemy's side, lowering the solid for the possible fire. It also protects the infantry with its entire body very well. The front view is less abstracted for the driver and the commander of the vehicle and also it has the awesome gun. Obviously, depends on modification, there could be even cannon installed. And because of this big ramp, it's very comfortable for infantry to leave the vehicle. They may do it very fast, especially if it is important in case the vehicle is damaged and there is the fire on board. And now let's go to the Russian-made analog BTR-82A with this clumsy door on the side. If you would see it in your real life, you'd be surprised that it's so small. If your infantry on board have lots of the gear, there is no way for the quick exit of the vehicle in case it really need it. At the back here, there is no way to install the ramp because of the engine. Yes, it is the engine compartment, which I think is quite useless. It's better to keep the engine on the front because in a way it also absorbs the energy of the possible impact from the enemy shells. Like for example, it is done in M2 Bradley. The other downside of this exit that if BTR would face the enemy, the infantry landing would get under the fire. So BTR should be under that certain angle and in a way it will increase its own space, its own shape, which makes it a very vulnerable one. And if those small doors are damaged, there is no way to evacuate this vehicle. The BTR-82A is the evolution of the Soviet design and it seems like the Russian military is unable to present something new massively on the front line, so they continue to use Soviet BTR and those kind of the BTRs. That's why I'm always telling that the Western-made equipment is the best of the best, and that is only how Ukraine may, after all, win this war, by using more of the Western equipment. If we speak about population, obviously Russia has more people, so that's why Ukraine should have those kind of the tools able to conquer the massiveness of the Russian army, be more precise, have longer range and the firepower. Luckily, Ukraine still obtains the crucial military support from our allies, including the United States of America. We'll see how it goes after the next elections. Ukraine is also using some of the equipment from our Turkish partners. We are speaking about MRAP Kirpi. They were also fighting in the Kursk region massively. But it seems like the other partner of Turkey, the Russian Federation, is not okay with those vehicles being delivered to Ukraine. Lavrov said today that they are dissatisfied that Turkish equipment is being sent to Ukrainian army. And also you to fight against the Russian forces on the Russian territory. Should we expect some move from Turkey in that place? Should they apply restrictions on Ukraine using Kirpi vehicles in Kursk region? I don't think so, honestly. Turkey has its own independent and sometimes even strange policy. But they agreed that the Ukrainian side will be supplied with some of their military equipment, including some of the covered ships which should be sent to Ukraine, I guess, next year. But there is also a big question about the defense of those ships, because as I told you many times, Russians do have aviation based in Crimea, so they may launch some of the missiles to hit this particular unit. That's why it needs extra protection, mostly air defense. Meanwhile, Ukraine continues to strike the Russian air defense. We are speaking about Buk M2 Russian air defense system that was hit with the help of the drone drop. Guys, the full videos like that I'm sure just on my Telegram channel because of the low censorship, so I highly recommend you to subscribe for my Telegram. Since Russia started its counteroffensive against the Ukrainian forces in the Kursk region, it became understandable that the regions of Rilsk, Lgov, Kurchatov are quite safe for civilians to return, because before Russia evacuated civilians from this area, or it's better to say they called civilians to evacuate, and mostly they left the place. And now Russians start to return to their homes, which were mostly vandalized and looted by the Russian army itself. Yes, in the areas which have never been under control of the Ukrainian forces. People just evacuated from the place and they are saying that everything was looted. Not just the private households, but also the local shops. Everything is gone. Yes, this area has never been under the Ukrainian army control. 
This is one of the shops in the town of Kornova. Yes, Ukraine was close to the place, but wasn't able to get into the settlement. So you see how the Russian army looted everything, not just in Ukraine, but also in Russia. It basically shows the lack of discipline inside the Russian army, and the less discipline you have, the more difficult it is to control your army. About the North Korean soldiers, we have the new data from Blinken. He said that 8,000 of the North Koreans already deployed or stationed in the Kursk region. So in that relatively small battlefield area, 8,000 North Korean troops may play a great role, actually. But if we speak about the general scale of the war, it doesn't matter. So after all, Putin thinks that North Korean soldiers will be capable against the Ukrainian army in Kursk. This is how he doesn't want to take his own army from the east. But the main thing behind this North Korean group is the political one, not the military. Meanwhile, the North Korean foreign minister visited Moscow and they promised to Russia that they will continue to support the Russian Federation till the victory. The victory in Ukraine, they say, but the aim for Russia is not the victory in Ukraine. Russia wants to restore the Soviet Union. Ukraine is just a step towards this ultimate achievement. And we'll see finally whose victory it will be. I would bet on Ukrainians' victory. Well, not a cyber truck this time, but a Lamborghini tractor, which Kadyrov claims is given to him as a present from the owner of the Lamborghini factory. I don't know why Kadyrov has so much fetish about the things which are expensive or unique. Maybe he also thinks to install some of the machine gun on this tractor, but the tractor looks great, I agree. However, I don't think that CEO of Lamborghini gave that tractor to Kadyrov. Kadyrov, as usual, is lying, as he lied before that Elon Musk gave him the cyber truck. You know, guys, we have this Twitter from Elon Musk, published just a few hours ago. A major factor for Ukraine was not overrun by Russia is the startling support I provided. At great risk to SpaceX cyber and physical attack by Russian military forces. Starlink is a bad bone of Ukrainian military communication at the front lines, because everything else has been blown up, jammed by Russia. It's not true. There are other tools of how Ukrainians may access to internet, but I agree that Starlink plays a big role. And Vice Prime Minister of Ukraine confirms that I'm ally, so Elon Musk wants to possess right now himself as the ally of Ukraine, even the ally of Ukrainian military. It is his response on many accusations towards him that he is playing on the Russian side, but if we dig a little deeper, you'll see that Elon Musk is not that supportive at all. Actually, Elon Musk wanted to block the Starlink access for Ukrainian military. And just because of the Pentagon involvement, it didn't happen. There was the period that you probably remember that the signal for Ukrainian Starlinks near the front lines was blocked. Or the internet speed was really, really slow and Ukrainians were not able to do anything with those antennas. This is the Washington Post article dated from the 1st of June 2023. The Pentagon has signed a contract to provide SpaceX Starlink satellite internet service in Ukraine, nearly eight months after Elon Musk company owned threatened to terminate access unless the United States government paid for it. So Elon Musk, is it a behavior of the Ukrainian ally? I would say no. Well, before Elon Musk said that he paid his own funds to help Ukraine, blah blah blah, but actually Pentagon bought the access for Ukrainian Starlinks after Elon Musk directly was involved in the failure of Ukrainian sea operation using the drone boats. Elon Musk ordered Starlink to be turned off during Ukraine offensive, book says. So Musk reportedly referred to it as a mini Pearl Harbor could be performed by Ukraine. Although Ukrainian forces were operating within their internationally recognized territorial waters, so we're speaking about the possible attack on the Sebastopol by the time it wasn't so defended, I mean the bay. And by that time Elon Musk said that Starlink was not meant to be involved in this war. It was so people can watch Netflix and chill and get online for school and do good peaceful things, not drone strikes. And now let's return to his current statement that the Starlink is a black bone of Ukrainian military, which, as he says, is not the intention that Starlink should be used. So the Starlinks were not jammed by Russia indeed, they were jammed by Starlink and Elon Musk directly. And it seems like the Starlink is not the unique tool specified just for use of the Ukrainian armed forces, 
Here we have one more Russian guy who obtained Starlink. The Russian army uses Starlinks a lot. And as the Starlink user myself, I may clarify that Starlink knows the exact geolocation of every antenna. Because if you can see it in your application yourself, I guess that the company also has the access towards that data. So they are able to locate every of their antennas and why they are still used by the Russian army. The Starlink says that if they jam the Russian antennas, they may also accidentally jam the Ukrainian antennas too, because it is hard to define the particular spots on the front lines which are under control of the Ukrainian or the Russian army. The settlements may go from one hand to another in a matter of hours, but I guess that if that question was really important, Starlink would have come out with idea of how to block the Russian antennas. But it seems like after all they don't care and they still provide their unique internet data not just for Ukrainian side but also for the Russian one. With a post on Twitter Elon Musk just wants to widen his reputation showing that he is not the Russian engine. No, 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 I'm not working for Russia. Yes, maybe, but he's just the useful idiot whom Russia continued to use. Guess it's not a surprise if a person is talented in one sphere it doesn't mean that he or she is talented talented everywhere. Moreover, it doesn't mean that the person is intelligent or smart, so it's better to filter what Elon Musk says and sometimes dive into the history of the posts. And we see this trend of the MAGA influencers that I'm not working for Russia, even from the Trump himself. Let's listen to the tiny fragment of his interview to Tucker Carlson, which he gave yesterday. It started with a simple move. How did you lose the election? It was Russia. And I'm saying to myself, wait a minute, I won this election. What the hell did Russia have to do with it? And then it went, and it was only supposed to be a one-day deal by the Democrats. In other words, it was going to, but the press picked it up and they liked it. They like, ooh, Russia, that sounds good. He just recalled the previous accusations that the elections of 2016 in the United States were influenced by Russia. Trump also said that he was the one who blocked the build of the Nord Stream Pipeline 2, which hit the Russian economy hard. He was the one providing few of the javelins to Ukraine, but again saying that they're taking the focus from the current policy of MAGA and from their long-term ban of the Ukrainian military support which happened the last year and partially this year. Because of that, the Ukrainian military wasn't able to get enough weapons to prepare for the military campaign of the summer 2024. And also that is why Russia is so successful on the front lines. You need tools to fight, you need military help, which was blocked mainly by this guy. Why? I already told you before. I don't think that Donald Trump is working for Russia as well. I would say he's in the same category as Elon Musk. His idea was to make the problem for Ukraine even worse. To show that the current White House administration, Joe Biden, is unable to cope with it. That is why MAGA blocked the military support and they only allowed it to happen after it was mainly useless for the summer campaign of 2024. So in general MAGA achieved its political results after all, which was built on many of the life losses of Ukrainians and the success of the Russian army on the front lines. Nothing personal, just business. That is the real face of this one. Alright guys, and so now let's go to the front lines review. The situation there, unfortunately for today, is not good for Ukraine, even with the current updates. So it was yesterday, the day before yesterday, in just two days, Russia moved that far on the south in Vugledar, and they continue to advance also in this area. So if they continue with the present pace, I would say in a couple of months they will take Krakow and all of that entire region under their control. So today they move towards Maximovka, the fight is going in the settlement and it's the final settlement on the way to this line of the settlements and this river and I expect that Russians may occupy this village tomorrow. Because again, just look at the space yesterday today. Russian forces also moved to Trudeva, so it's understandable that they will reach this river very, very soon and they will try to strike Krakow from two of the points or even three of the points. I mean, at least from this side and uh, this side as well. Here you can see there is the lake, which is the obstacle for the Russian army. 
if we go to the north over here russia moved there as well not as dramatically as on the south but still there is the movement after russia occupied slowly the way they have pretty much good chances to advance from the western side towards pokrovsk in terms direction the ukrainian defense is more successful but still there is the tiny little russian army movement so they took initiative entirely in all of the regions the main issues for Ukrainian army continue to be with Ukrainian military command, with the lack of the Ukrainian defense structures like defense lines, also with the lack of munition and army men. The issues are dramatic and I don't see the close perspective for Ukraine to solve them or to get more weaponry. Despite who is the next United States president, I believe that the military support of Ukraine will be limited. It is limited already, as you see. Unfortunately, and every day I see how Zelensky blames our partners for not enough military support, but at the same time I continue to say that there are some of the internal problems within the Ukrainian army and within Ukraine itself. Ukraine should solve its own issues as well, not just to blame our allies, because after all every country follows its own interests, so whether you like it or not, business as usual right for this reason for ukraine right now it's easier to solve the internal problems and after that ask for more support show that you see we don't have corruption any longer our army was reformed the defense lines are being built so ukraine does everything for protection so please give us weaponry in that case the chance for the positive answer is much higher i don't understand for example the situation with the ex-ukrainian general sodol who i consider as many of the ukrainian soldiers is the war criminal not for the russian army but for ukraine itself because of his stupid orders the ukrainian military lost many of the soldiers but somehow he was just dismissed from his position after he didn't pass the medical check the same story as with zaluzhny by the way after the medical commission said that he is not fit so this guy should be arrested not just released from ukrainian army it is nonsense the investigation should be done whether he works for russia even but everyone is calm and just some of the influencers and some of the independent journalists are saying about it well luckily he was at least dismissed from his position but I'm sure that there are many of the commanders like Sonol. The Ukrainian army absolutely needs reforms, especially in the control management of the army. And those are not my words. The biggest Ukrainian volunteers are screaming about it. We need to change. We need to change or we die. That's what they say. Compared to those volunteers, my rhetoric on this channel is not even harsh. It's very light. Yeah, I try to do my best to be calm and keep my emotions controlled. There is the rating published of the biggest armies in the world based on the number of the troops and you can see that Ukraine takes the 6th place with 900,000 soldiers. Russia has 420,000 soldiers more, but they do not use this full number in the war against Ukraine. They use around 600,000 up to 700,000. So actually the Russian army group is smaller compared to Ukrainian army. In this case, why Ukrainian army is in lack of the army man? Well, because from those 900,000, Ukraine uses roughly 200,000 to fight against Russia. Yes, the vast part of Ukrainian army isn't fighting, it is used for logistics, but there is the big percentage of Ukrainian troops that could have been deployed to the front lines, but they are not there because of the system, the Ukrainian army itself. It is too big, too volatile and partially Soviet. You need lots of the men to perform a single task. It's not like the NATO standard army, at least right now. Again, if we speak about the army structure, if we speak about the battle forces, particularly the combat battalions, yes, they're even better than in NATO, especially now that they have experience, but the system itself is not working well, even then it has the resource. It creates the strange situation that for Ukraine it's easier to take the men from the streets, sometimes even by force, than to use its own soldiers in its own army, because they are deployed in a special group in Lviv, for example, and to send those to the front lines you need to change their task, you need to do some internal bureaucracy, some of the training, but if you mobilize the random people from the streets, it's the easier way, first of all from the bureaucratic perspective. The crazy thing that the war is happening, but the bureaucracy rules in the army work as usual. For this reason, Ukraine needs the reforms in its army. And the reforms in general, so by the time Zelensky is pushing our allies, 
Our allies also should push Zelensky and the Ukrainian government for those reforms just for the Western support to be used in the best way possible. I guess sorry that I continue to say about the flaws, but we need to say about the picture as it is. I'm not making it up, I'm just taking the information which is spread by our volunteers, our soldiers, that definitely the situation for now it's not good. But for the long-term perspective, I believe that Ukraine has no choice rather than to win this war. And for Russia, there is no choice but to collapse. It will just follow the destiny of the Soviet Union. And now, my friends, please don't forget to press your huge like to this video. By doing so, it helped me a lot. And as usual, I wish you all a peaceful sky wherever you are. And have a great time.